Larry Pesci spends his day on the attack. From a computer inside his Rhode Island home, he hacks into computer networks and software looking for private data. To gain access to their intellectual property, uh, their money, or, well, credit card data. Larry doesn't pick the companies he targets. They pick him and pay him to find vulnerabilities in their information systems and report them. The privacy awareness issues uh, for folks to be able to make informed risk decisions, to be able to uh, help folks um, as opposed to exploit them for our own profit and good. Larry's what's called a white hat, a large and often underreported segment of the diverse hacking culture. The greater Boston area has one of the largest white hat hacking communities in the entire world with a high concentration of high tech companies and a number of top notch schools like Harvard and MIT. The history runs deep. One of the first papers to be published, put up on the web, was the guide to lock picking. And, you know, this was something that had always been passed around at MIT. Judith Donoff is a fellow at Harvard University's Berkman Center for Internet and Society. She says hackers are often motivated by the thrill of pulling something off that nobody else can do. Finding a flaw, cracking a code. It's what they do with the knowledge that sets them apart. Black hat hackers use their skills in illegal and devious ways. And the gray hats, well, they're somewhere in the middle. To be able to show how a system can be made better is very, very different than the side of it that's tied also into a thrill of, of being malicious and destructive. It's very, very different than organized international networks of bank robbers or people going after nuclear facilities. Those so-called black hat hackers are the ones we hear the most about. Robert Tapp and Morris unleashed the first computer worm. Alberto Gonzalez stole more than 135 million credit card numbers hacking into chain stores. And Bradley Manning is the U.S. Army specialist accused of stealing classified information on the war in Afghanistan and giving it to whistleblower website WikiLeaks. I think there's more people that are trying to prevent that from the hacking community than actually perpetrating those crimes. Chris Weisopel is the co-founder of Vericode, a Burlington-based computer security company. Like Larry Pesci, he's parlayed his hacking skills into a career helping companies protect themselves. Weisopel says there will always be a debate in the hacker community. How far is too far? especially when it involves probing other people's systems and exposing flaws. But he says the perception of hackers is changing, and he believes for the better. Just uh, last year um, at DEF CON, the largest hacker convention in Las Vegas, I think like 10,000 people go to it, you had officials from the Department of Defense there. An assistant deputy secretary of defense went and gave a keynote and said, I need you guys. You guys need to come and work for the Department of Defense. So instead of hurting us, many hackers may actually be protecting us. It all depends on the color hat they decide to wear. I'm Ted Daniel, Fox 25 News.